uh, we have talked about different approaches, different guidelines to find candidates Japanese function. Uh, the first two approaches uh, that were studied uh, are quite systematic. Uh, this approach, uh, you have always to use your intuition. Uh, however, it is applicable to uh, linear, uh, to rather uh, more broader class of systems. We uh, demonstrate this approach with one more example. Uh, so we have this system x1 dot equal to. Uh, we have this uh, nonlinear system, and we want to apply this approach to determine uh, uh, Lebanon function. Uh, g of x uh, can be selected in different ways, and the simplest is to choose uh, this uh, uh, a one one. Uh, if we make a function of both x one and x two, uh, we shall have more freedom. However. Uh, with uh, difficulty. Here, if we take it, uh, make it function of x1 only, uh, we shall have less freedom. Uh, however, uh, it will simplify the things. x1 plus. Uh, this uh, selection, since it is a uh, 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 gradient of a scalar function, so it must satisfy this condition partial g over partial x2. That must be equal to partial g2 over partial x1. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, which uh, gives you, uh, there can be several different choices. Again, we uh, take the same choice. There is uh, a one two, a one two, and a two one are constants. And furthermore, a one two is equal to a two one. This selection will satisfy this condition. Then we determine v dot. V dot is equal to g transpose of x into f of x. f of x is given by this expression. G transpose uh, we have already uh, selected with the appropriate choice of a1 and a2. With uh, this selection, v dot uh, comes out to be equal to simple substitution results into this expression and uh, then uh, what about this term definiteness cannot be determined this term we can determine the definiteness what about this term uh, if we expand it so uh, definiteness of this term can be determined but for this term uh, we uh, cannot uh, do anything. Uh, what about this term? Again, this is difficult to determine definiteness. Uh, here, this h of x uh, has uh, one property that is uh, x into h of x that is always greater than zero. This is uh, some constraint on this nonlinearity which is provided to us already. Uh, so, if we can somehow Collect this term and this term, uh, this x1 and x2. So then we can, uh, we shall be able to talk about definiteness of this term. So we shall uh, remove the terms uh, for which we cannot determine the definiteness. We select uh, this one. Why this selection? A12 equal to A22 equal to half A11 x1. What will that do? So here you have x1 and x2 minus a12 x1 x2. Here is uh, any other such term. Here is again we have x1 and x2 and here is x1 x2. So this term x1 x2 this term x1 x2 and this term this will be cancelled out because we have selected a11 to be twice of these uh, things. So that is the reason for this selection. Uh, for this term x1 square we can tell about the definiteness. This term definiteness can be determined. So with this selection this term uh, and uh, this term 
and this term, these terms will be cancelled out. Is it clear? And then what do we get? A12, what is A12? We have selected it to be equal to 1 for uh, our own convenience. So V dot is equal to X2. Uh, so what about uh, definiteness? X2 squared and this X2 squared is cancelled out. Then we have minus X1 squared minus X1 plus X2 into H of X1 plus X2. So this is always greater than 0 and hence V dot is negative definite. Next, uh, with this uh, selection, G becomes, so this is G of X and then what is V of X? How do we get V of X? Integration from 0 to x1 and then what? Uh, so this was the expression g1 with uh, some dummy variable over here and the second argument substituted equal to 0 uh, dy1 plus here integration from 0 to x2 and g2 here x1 and y2 integration with respect to y2. So 0 x1, what is g1? This first term with second argument substituted equal to 0. So what should I write over here? 2 by 1. 2 by 1 and its integration d by 1. Here from integration from 0 to x2 and what is it, g2? g2 is this term. Uh, first argument, we substitute it for x1. And for the second argument, what we substitute? y2. y2 plus y2 b y2. So what is its integration with respect to uh, this y1? So y1 square by 2, 2 is cancelled out. If we substitute the limit of integration, so we get x1 square by 2. What do we get over here? x1 into y. So two, two is cancelled out, so x1 square. Here we have x1 square, and here we have x1 y2 plus y2 square by 2, and substitute this limit of integration. We have x1 square plus uh, x1, x2 plus x2 square by 2. And if you substitute the lower limit, that is equal to 0. So what about definiteness of uh, this function? So we uh, somehow rearrange it to see the definiteness. Uh, uh, we can uh, rearrange to write it in, in this way x1 plus x2 by 2 whole square if we expand it we get x1 square x1 x2 plus uh, x1 square by 4 uh, sorry x2 square by 4 here we have x2 squared by 2, two. so plus x2 squared by 4. Why we uh, here in to uh, write it in this way? So that we can see the definiteness of this function. So what is conclusion? Uh, the equilibrium point for this system which is at origin because h of 0 is 0. So the equilibrium point for this system which is at origin is asymptotically stable. Rather it is uh, globally asymptotically stable because this function is also really unbounded.
So this is the approach, uh, and uh, you will see that for each uh, different problem, you have to apply a different uh, strategy for the selection of g of x. So g of x should be selected such that uh, this v dot comes out to be negative definite, and uh, g of x satisfies this condition, and the resultant v of x is positive definite.